I'm Michael Crawford, and I play Professor Marvel, and the door guard, and uh, the tour guide, and the wizard. I, yes, I'm enjoying myself greatly. It's a very, very uplifting show. And uh, I, I, we, the reason I, I did the show was for my grandchildren, because they'd never seen me do anything really live. And to see the joy of the evening is to go out at the end of the show and have these youngsters, these little ones, dressed as Dorothy. And they are brought in by their parents or their grandparents or, or both. And they're, they're, they're not at all afraid. They've no idea who I am. They don't, they, I mean, I wear a wig in the show, uh, as you may see from the posters. And so they've really no idea who I am, but they're not afraid. They have their photo taken with me, and um, and uh, if they want, I put a little uh, a little mark on their red shoes as a message from the wizard. It's the joyous part of the whole uh, of the whole evening to me. Theatres coming back to theatres that you've played and loved is is always. And we did Barnum here for two years, so I, I had a wonderful, wonderful time here. Well, Andrew. Uh, I mean, did have he made the phone call to say would I would I like to do the show, and and then when I came along when I came back off holiday, which was six weeks after he asked me, uh, I met up with Bill Kenwright and and Andrew, and we had a really constructive and good conversation. Then I met up with Jeremy Sams, and then I met with Danielle and. Uh, so that's what brought me into, into Wizard. But anyone else in my life who would have that influence, uh, I, I, I think they've passed. I mean, my, I had an old agent called Mort Viner, who was, who was the agent to Gene Kelly and Shirley MacLaine and Dean Martin. And he only had four clients, and I was one of those four. And I, I had great, great respect for his opinion and what he thought. Um, and so... Other than them, it's my grandchildren. <laughs> so it really comes down to the, 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 the kids just saying, oh, Papa, we'd love to see you in something. And uh, that was the final straw. Yes, they came to the previews and uh, gave me great encouragement and thinking I was wonderful, and I wasn't. So uh, I was really uh, spurred on by them, and uh, hopefully I'm a little better now. I'm uh, not... Sure, I would encourage them to enter the world of show business. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a very different place now than, than when I started. And uh, we worked in repertory companies, so we did a lot of groundwork. And now they go to, uh, youngsters will, like Danielle and Sophie, will go to uh, schools like the Arts Educational, uh, which are wonderful institutions. I mean, they've, they've been going for since I started, certainly, and, and, and uh, I think my first girlfriend went to Arts Educational um, when I was about 14, and David Hemmings went to, who many of you might not know who I'm talking about, but you'd, you'd, you'd do a different show every week, the scenery would change every week, you'd work on stage management, you'd understand the problems of the stage work, and I really enjoyed that, even though at the time it's great to look back and say, oh, those were the days, or those, so I, I, I mustn't do that, that's, that's very bad. But, uh, bad professor. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that's uh, a line from the show. Uh, but I, 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 I do think that we mightn't have found such a wonderful Dorothy if we hadn't had this show, because Danielle, I'm, I'm boring about, and Sophie, that I think they're both so wonderful. And I truly do. I couldn't say that if I didn't mean it. They, uh, they're both very professional young ladies and a delight to work with and extremely talented and intuitive, which is a great, great help as well for them.